It's Wellness Wednesdays. It's Wellness Wednesdays, and I will not be switching to video this time because, um, like I said on Monday, I did something to my eye. It's not pretty. I'd rather just record it this way than uh, going on camera and it looking horrendously distracting and horrifying. Um, I am going to talk about control today and, and the need for control and what's a healthy amount of control and what's not. I started talking about this on Manly Mondays this week, but, you know, I keep Manly Mondays um, aimed at men, issues about men, and I don't want people to think that I'm saying only men have issues with needing too much control because that's not so. More and more where I see when people really screw up and make a mess of it, it is this. It is needing too much control. Um, more on that in a bit. Let me do the let me do the begging for money bit. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Uh, I'm going to go through some uh, personal stuff this um, next week. Not this week when I'm back. Uh, I got some cool stuff uh, that I'm going to show the patrons or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Apparently, Kofi.com slash Leanna K, but it's buy someone a coffee. So, okay. But uh, yeah, um, six people, six people need subsidized services every, I'd like to be every week at this point. We're at every month. Um, yeah, that was lengthy, but it's important. So control. One thing intense trauma therapy over just over a year taught me is that everybody needs to feel in control of some things. In control of one's body, in control of one's bodily boundaries, financial boundaries, you know, um... People don't just get to do anything they want to you. People are not interchangeable. They are not viable. They are not tools for another person's use. They are people. That's important. Having not enough control is a problem. Needing too much control is also a problem. And that's the part that tends to go kind of sideways in discussions because you've seen it with every controversy in gaming. It tends to come down to a group that doesn't understand gamers seeming too demanding wanting too much control over other people's decisions and gamers going, oh, hell no. And then gamers get branded as bad people because of those control levers. Gamers once again go, hell no. And it becomes this huge thing. And it takes often something fairly dramatic for that to stop. Now, in that case, gamers are right. You, you should be trying to persuade somebody of things, not coerce someone. When people freak out over a piece of media and start making demands, equally, that's not ideal. Persuade, don't try to coerce. So people are like, I'm not coercing. I'm just expressing my opinion. And that's what I'm going to talk about. How to express your opinion in a way that doesn't seem like you are demanding absolute control. This is what I feel statements were designed to do. But I've, I feel statements have become corrupted 
they've become things that people just tack, I feel, onto an accusation instead of I feel. So I'm going to use the whole Hogwarts legacy kerfuffle as the dif the difference here. But it could be anything. It could be The Last of Us 2. It could be, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto, whatever. But for the people, I, people, some people sincerely believed that they, they could not fathom that anybody could play Hogwarts Legacy and still support trans rights. And that's, you know, that's, that's where they're at. That's honest. But saying, if you play this game, you're a bad person. Well, that doesn't change the message by adding, I feel if you play this game, you're a bad person. It's still an argument based on facts. You are making an accusation. You are making a claim that can be debated. And not allowing debate, making that an ultimatum, that does come across as wanting absolute control. As opposed to saying, it hurts me. I feel hurt when people buy this game knowing what J.K. Rowling is about because it strengthens her brand and, you know, gives her more relevance. I don't, you know, I, I'm not saying I think that. I don't care how much money she makes. She's still wrong. But in my opinion, but see that you can argue that based on facts. And when I say she's still wrong, I'm prepared to argue that. When someone says, I feel hurt when I feel people see people playing this game. I quest I, I question whether this person has my best interests at heart. That's a feeling that cannot be argued. That is how the person feels. And if somebody says something of that form and you still think they're, if you think they're disingenuous, which is a r word that was thrown at me so many times and oh my God, I'm so sick of it because it doesn't make any sense. I'll get to that in a bit because that's another control thing, right? But if someone's saying these are my feelings, you can't argue that, that, that is it, it, they're not saying, I believe I'm 100% right. This is a subjective thing, right? This is just the way I feel. I feel less safe in groups that embrace this game. Or I feel very uncomfortable because, you know, things J.K. Rowling have said have hurt me. And I can't separate that from the game, right? Now, if you say that to someone and they still actively play the game and actively talk about the game in front of you and they are not considerate of your feelings, That's that says a lot, right? But that's more effective, quite frankly, than saying, oh, if you play this game, you're a bad person. Why? Because you're continuing to give someone a choice. Now, you can't force somebody to consider your feelings. And that's the difficult thing. You have your choices. Other people have their choices too. And I cannot think of the number of people I have had to step away from because of the blackmailing language that they wouldn't stop. You know, making statements of fact and then being unwilling to see counter evidence to their claims, right? If you start making claims of fact, that's a, that's a debate on facts. Feelings aren't facts. Facts aren't feelings, right? If you want to have a conversation about feelings, if you want to have a I need to know I matter as a person conversation, have that conversation. Don't get into a bait on, on the merits of an argument, right? And be prepared. Someone can care about your feelings, but not, not quite understand why you feel so strongly about something. 
And there has to be a negotiation there. Because again, if people are just curbing their behavior so they don't upset you, because you're going to get very aggressive with them or there's going to be a lot of overwhelming emotion, you have to question whether this is a toxic friendship, right? Because that people shouldn't just be doing things because they're afraid of the way someone's going to react. And, you know, they might not have really, you know, they might be reading stuff in that's not there. Just because somebody's afraid of your reaction doesn't mean you're necessarily doing anything wrong. Because I'm afraid is sometimes used a little too freely as well because people realize when they're shipped off to therapy as teenagers by neglectful parents that somebody says, I'm afraid, and everything is just supposed to stop. And take it from somebody who went through a lot of trauma therapy, that's not life either, right? And you have to enforce your own boundaries. And that's where the disingenuous thing comes in. That is just thrown around as a cudgel way too often to the point that I actually think that people don't know what the word means anymore. They've just seen it on cable news so often or in politics so often that they've adopted it into their language. And this is a massive control lever that people don't necessarily understand. When you claim someone is being disingenuous, that means they are basically playing dumb artificially, which is a dishonest act. And people throw this out there. You're being disingenuous. And then expect to have a nice little chat. And this is where I set a boundary. They do not get a nice little chat until they retract the accusation basically of dishonest behavior. And I will not bend on that. And it pisses people off. But you know what? Fine. Because somebody who'd get pissed off by that, some somebody who get pissed off by, I know what I intended here. You don't. You don't have any proof. So you just made an accusation against me that you can't prove and I won't tolerate that. I have enough self-respect there. Take that back. If somebody doesn't go, you're right, I misspoke, that is starting a conversation with an imbalanced power dynamic. And there are so many examples of this kind of crap I see in alleged conversations. Setting those boundaries on dialogue allows both people to have a healthy amount of control over it and filters out people who need too much control over something. If someone needs a golden timeline like Kang the freaking Conqueror and they need to just dominate everything because otherwise they can't cope, that is not someone who you can have a relationship of equals with. It may be someone who's going through a bad time. People who are traumatized tend to flail for control. Um, and, you know, as somebody who did that in the past, this is why I'm so, I'm so tough on this because I have to remind myself, no, don't do that. You have, you have to give people their agency. You have to not try to control people so that you feel comfortable. Part of the distress tolerance element of trauma therapy is learning to feel uncomfortable without the alarm bells going off that you feel unsafe. Yes, it is possible. If you don't think it is, that is a sign you need to talk to somebody who can help you set healthier boundaries and and be able to tell the difference between healthy discomfort and legitimate warning bells that something's not right. And part of that is really knowing yourself, really validating yourself, really recognizing that 
Your concerns are valid. Your feelings matter. Listen to your feelings. But don't expect everybody just snap to attention and, you know, salute because you're uncomfortable. You have to set clear boundaries that other people understand. And you have to be prepared to, you have to be aware of when you're making state true I feel statements and when you're making accusations with I feel as a preface. Because if you don't get that straight, you're going to come off as a control freak and you're going to get bad reactions from people and you're not going to understand why. And they may not necessarily be aware enough of it to explain it to you. People who meant no harm get very upset when they're called bad people because the average person doesn't want to be a bad person. The other per- the, the people want to be good people and they want credit when they mean well. And that's understandable, right? That's understandable that when someone meant no harm, they want that to count. And there's this very toxic messaging that's come out. And I don't agree with it because you treat a person with good intents, very different than you treat somebody with bad intents. Somebody you think legitimately has bad intents, you walk away from because you can't win that one. That's why it's very important to give people benefit of the doubt, to give people presumption of innocence because it doesn't make sense to fight with somebody you don't think is coming at you straight. And so I disagree that intents don't matter, only the impacts of words matter. No, the impact of your words matters, sure. But intents matter too. If you truly believe that somebody intended to treat you badly, what are you doing? If you jump up and down and stomp your feet and throw a fit and intents don't matter, only impacts matter, that, you know, you're a bad person. Okay, if you're having that fight, you're not enforcing your boundaries. You're not. Because you're letting people know that you think they're a bad person and they can still have access to you. You're not rewarding the people you don't think are a bad person when you give bad people your time. So as much as you think you're standing up for yourself there, and this is what I had to learn, When you give people you truly think are bad people who don't have your best interests at heart, your time, you are encouraging attracting bad people into your life and discouraging good people from coming into your life because you give away all your time and energy on bad actors. You spend all your time fighting with people who think you're garbage and treat you accordingly You have no time left for the people that actually give a damn. And that means you're unintentionally acting like you don't give a damn about the people who do give a damn. Think about that. It's important. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Going to be some interesting stuff coming up on Patreon. Some personal stuff. I'm going to try something new soon. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it on the service whose name I don't know how to pronounce. It's either coffee.com slash Leanna K or ko-fi.com slash Leanna K. Uh, and if you want help, figuring out some of this boundary stuff, some of this control stuff, please sign up for a Leanna Care session. It's way cheaper than paying a licensed therapist for this kind of emotional nutrition. Um, But if you want to go the route of conventional therapy and you find a good therapist, that's great too. Either way, thanks for watching and be well.